Hey there, this is the DIY Marketing School podcast. I'm your host and your marketing coach, Melanie Diane Howe. And today I have a very special guest. He's a coffee shop owner who has been using Facebook Live regularly in the last few weeks. And his inspiring story will share with you how he's increased his engagement, his audience, and also his connection with his people. So today's episode is a little different, and I'm really excited about it. This is uh, an interview that I did with John Mitchell, who is the owner of Zateo Coffee in Arkansas. He actually owns two, they have two locations, brick and mortar, and they do some online sales. And he also has some uh, workshop programs, and he is, you know, hoping to launch an online course as well one day. But I brought John on the show because I have loved seeing what he's been doing with his live videos. So John really embraced live video just a few weeks ago. And the evolution that his live videos has taken has been really, really fun to watch. But he's just making better connections. He's getting more engagement. He's growing his reach. And I just, I really wanted to bring John on to share his story with you, because I hope that it will one, inspire you to do more with live video because of the results you can get, but also to hear how this, basically this brick and mortar business has responded to the pandemic and all the changes and has had to pivot and how he's finding that this live video experience is helping him actually connect deeper with his people and his audience. And so uh, this is actually an interview that we did on a Facebook live video. And I thought, you know what, my podcast listeners need to hear John's story as well. And so um, I just wanted to bring it on here and let you know that. Uh, So I talk a little bit about my background and how John and I connected and how we met but um, on the on the interview. But I also wanted to let you know that John is also a student in my Facebook Live boot camp, which by the time you were coming around to listening to this episode, either the doors are literally getting ready to close right that right this minute, or they have just closed. And I wanted to mention it to you just because we do talk about it a little bit on the interview, this program that I'm launching. But I wanted to let you know that I will be launching it again. Uh, so if you did miss the deadline and the doors have closed, have no fear. Just stay in tune with this lovely podcast. You'll hear about it again. But you can also visit melaniediane.com forward slash live bootcamp and get signed up on the wait list. So without further ado, here is my interview with John Mitchell. Well, hello, everybody. Oh, I love me a little live video. Today, I've got a special guest that I'm going to bring on here in just a little bit. But first, I want to say hello to you guys. So if you're here, say hello to us. I know we have Crystal's here, Doug's here, Julie's here. Um, but definitely say hi in the comments. We love it when you uh, let us know that you're here, you're watching. I know some of you might be watching while you're multitasking, whatnot, but this is going to be a really, really great uh, show today because I am bringing on my friend, John Mitchell, who if you've been tuning into any of these live videos lately, I've pretty much, I think I've brought John up in every single live video. Um, I have actually shared some of his broadcasts on my personal page because I've been enjoying what he's been doing so much. So this guy, if you, again, are connected to me, he's maybe not going to be a stranger. You've heard of him. So um, I'm really excited that he is willing to come on the show today and talk about how he's been using live video for his brick and mortar coffee shop business right now. He's got some other things that he's doing. He's obviously had to pivot during all this craziness that we've been dealing with, but I really have enjoyed watching John use Facebook Live videos, and I've seen the evolution of his videos over just a short period of time. And I know that he's gotten some really great, fun results, but I also thought, you know, he, you, a lot of us are in business, uh, a lot of us are entrepreneurs here, some of you are in small businesses, We've all, we're all looking for crazy ideas, new ideas, and I thought, what a great example to bring on, have him talk about how he's been using live video and what he's been able to do with it and because of it. So I thought it'd be great for you guys to kind of hear from uh, one of our own a little bit here. And uh, so we've got some other people. Annie's here. She is drinking coffee right now. Uh, Micah, 
Thanks. <laughs> uh, sometimes I wear my glasses. My I have astigmatism in my right eye, and I think I've been on my computer a little bit too much this week, so my eye is annoying me uh, a lot. So I've got the glasses on today. Um, and uh, Crystal says, love the coffee shop talk. So yeah, I think Crystal's also been following uh, John as well. So very good. Now you guys also, I know that I'm sure John is more than happy to answer any questions. So if you do have some questions about how he's, you know, what he's been doing and stuff, then by all means, please be uh, feel free to ask in the comments. I'm going to bring John on here in just a second. But I want to give you a, a little bit of a background. So I know John, um, to be honest with you, I don't think we've ever actually had an in-person conversation. So we're like virtual business buddies, if you will. Uh, but John and I um, are part of a family of entrepreneurs. And Crystal Profits here, she's also uh, one of these people. We uh, have taken some online courses, uh, and we've been in the same courses. And so we've been in the same community as alumni of these courses, and we get to kind of connect with each other, learn from each other, and collaborate. And John is a part of one of those communities. And so I have been following John's story for a while, uh, knowing what he's doing in regards to his coffee shop business, but also what he's you know, wanting to do outside of the actual brick and mortar experience. And so that's how I know John. So I don't know John, okay, but I've gotten to know him even more because of his live videos. So I literally don't think I've ever even had a conversation with him, but then he started doing these videos and all of a sudden I'm like, I'm like literally a regular in his coffee shop now uh, because I sit and watch these videos. I have, I will be honest, I've never drank John's coffee, but I love what he's doing and I love being a part of the experience. So that's kind of like a little example, but I wanted to give you that backstory because this is also a powerful story about how here I am, I know about John's business, I know all these things he's doing because he's been sharing a lot of this stuff with live video. So that's another reason I wanted to bring John on the show, but I wanted to let you guys know a little bit of that backstory so that you would know how I know this guy, right? And how I kind of actually don't know this guy. So <laughs> there you go. That's the beauty of social media is we can connect and stay in touch with people without actually staying in touch with them. So it's pretty interesting. So, all right. So I am going to bring John on and I'm going to bring him into the feed and we're going to talk coffee shop talk here a little bit, but we're really going to talk about, again, how he's been using live video for his business, his coffee shop business. And I'll let him tell you a little bit more about his uh, coffee shop business, of course. So John, I'm looking at you down in the green room. Are you ready? Give me a thumbs up. He says yes. So here he is. Welcome, John. How are you? Hey, good, Melanie. How are you doing? I'm doing good. So it looks like you're at home today. I am at home today. Yes. Yeah. I'm nice. In my little, I'm in my little closet of an office where I like hide away <laughs> when, when I need to try to do something focused. I always hear that um, I have a lot of friends. They say they like to go into the laundry room when they need to escape. Because for whatever reason, the rest of the family doesn't really want to be in the laundry room. So that's where they go and escape. So yeah, here you are in your little closet office. It works. It's good. Yeah, well, it works. Thanks so much for being here. I know I really, really feel so grateful to have you uh, take the time today to talk to my audience about how you've been using live video. Now, I know and we're, you'll, I'm gonna, I want you to talk to us a little bit about your business and give us that what it, your business is and all that stuff. But I know you've been using live video for a few months now, a couple, few weeks, really, really. And you've been on Instagram and Facebook. But, yeah. you know, and I know that for the most part, I talk a lot about Facebook Live, but I do want you to share a little bit about how you've been using Instagram too. But before we get into any of that stuff, do me a favor and just introduce yourself and tell my audience, you know, who you are and a little bit about your business and everything. Sure. Yeah. Well, first, let me say thank you for inviting me. I'm very humbled that you <laughs> invite me on here. Um, but yeah, this is this is fun stuff. So yeah, like you said, my name's uh, John Mitchell. I live in central Arkansas. So we live uh, in a town of probably 60 or so thousand people just north of Little Rock, which is the capital of Arkansas for those of us that are geographically challenged. Um, <laughs> me. Uh, yeah, most Americans. Uh, so uh <laughs> And so we've got a cafe there in that town. There's literally like four colleges in this town of about 60,000. It's crazy. And then we've also got a cafe in the capital city of Little Rock. And we've had this business for almost five years. So it'll be five years in November. And um, yeah, it's just, it was a, it was a dream of mine back in my previous life, which was corporate IT. I spent about 15 or so years in corporate IT and the entrepreneurial bug uh, sort of came alive in me, and I just started down this very long journey of getting here to where we've got two specialty coffee shops. 
Awesome. I did yeah. not know your background was, was in IT. That's yeah. fun. That's yeah. super cool. So yeah. I'm sure that you've, I'm sure you've applied a lot of that knowledge to running your business. There's a lot of, a lot of IT that goes into any business really. And I think that's, that's yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's a, that's a nice skill to have for sure. So I know as a yeah. marketing person, I find myself sometimes like, I'm like, am I a marketing person or am I an IT person? Because I end up in those conversations a lot of times. So I'm yeah. sure that that's helpful. So, well, very good. So why don't you tell us, I want you to tell us how you've been um, using live video, but video, but I know you've, you've dabbled in it and you've used it in the past, but you have really embraced it. And of course, the whole COVID-19, the pandemic, I think had a little bit of a part in that. But what I really would love for you to share is like, why did you, you know, what about that? And what did you change? What made you kind of say, all right, let's do this. I want to hear a little bit about the evolution, you know, of how you've been handling the live video. Yeah, sure. So uh, it really has been uh, this pandemic situation has pushed a lot of entrepreneurs into a place of being a lot more scrappy and a lot more, I don't know, innovative is maybe not the right word, but it's caused us to change the way that we do things in a lot of ways. Uh, prior to the COVID-19 you know, mess, I was very much behind the scenes. Um, I, I set my business up that way intentionally. I never wanted it to rise and fall on me for I had to be there all the time to make things go. So I intentionally have sort of been in the background we could you know another it's another conversation to to say whether that's a good or a bad thing um yeah but with this COVID-19 situation and literally volumes and revenue dropping in you know by 70 80 percent right uh as a business owner it's like you have to take a really quick and hard look at how am I spending my money like what is what's it going to require to to survive this deal. And that typically means like bringing costs in that aren't necessary. You know, we have to look at overhead. We have to look at labor costs, like all of these things. And so we realized really early on, um, we're going to have to essentially, you know, lay off the majority, like basically a hundred percent of our staff. Okay. Because one, they're going to be better off in the unemployment type situation and two, like we literally can't survive and keep all of those people on payroll right now. Um, so that meant um, me, the owner uh, got to step up and step in and I had to be in the shop like a hundred percent of the time. And like your memory. So we have two shops. Um, we decided to temporarily close one of our stores, which is in downtown Little Rock. We did that because our customer base there is more business type. Like there's just nobody down in that area. And so yeah. we decided, okay, we're going to close that location. We're going to focus our efforts and energies in our Conway store. I live near that store so I can be there easily every day. And so I did that. I decided I was going to man that store solo and be behind the bar and serve customers the best that we could. Um, but that also meant I had like a lot of, uh, downtime. I had a lot of free time where I was behind the bar by myself, waiting for customers to call in or come in or send an order online or whatever. And I thought, you know what? Um, one, getting on live and doing live broadcasts is going to be great to keep my business top of mind for people. It's going to give me a presence and I'm going to stay in front of people. And two, honestly, it was for my own entertainment. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> Quite honestly, like I needed that interaction. I wanted to talk to people, but I also knew that like, I had an opportunity to educate people and bring some value to them by just sort of like pulling the curtain back and saying like, this is what it looks like to open a coffee shop in the morning. Like we dial our espresso in, we get everything set. And I knew that there were going to be people that that would be completely new information for, and it would probably be somewhat interesting. And a lot of people were sitting at home on their devices anyway. And I, I knew that. And I was like, I'm going to give them something to watch and something interesting to look at and it'll entertain me <laughs> and we can kind of go back and forth and develop, you know, a relationship based on this. And so that's what I did. Yeah. I, I will tell you that I have learned a number of things from tuning into your videos. Uh, for example, the, the dialing in process. 
Yeah. I, I never knew that there was this daily process of dialing in and, and making adjustments and stuff. And I remember one day you were like, man, it's just taking longer today than it normally does. And then one day you're like, woo, right out, right out of the gate, we're dialed in. Like, it's just interesting yeah. that there's these variabilities. And I never knew that. And it, it, mm -hmm. what it did for me, it made me appreciate your craft that much more. You know what right. I mean? So yep. it was a great educational moment, but it also had a, a nice fringe benefit of, me admiring and, and appreciating it even more. And, yeah. and the other thing I'll say, you know, I've pulled up Crystal uh, Prophet's comment here uh, because I, I shared your videos. I was like, for me, I tuned in and I was like, okay, what's, what's John doing over here? You know, cause it, the notification showed up. Don't usually see the live video notica notifications from you. And I was like, I mean, I'm wearing my local coffee shop shirt today in support of all the coffee shops. Right. And oh, sure, they, yeah. they, they are, the, they are similar. They are in the downtown location a lot of business uh, folks are in there. They, I would say, you know, probably, I'm guessing, it's a guess, they can tell me if I'm wrong here, but about 80% of their, bus their business comes from professionals that are working downtown, having meetings, whatever it might be. Yeah, like traffic. Yeah, and so, um, you know, they're, they have had to pivot as well during this time, and they and it's hard for all, all of these uh, stores. But what I my biggest thing, and I remember telling you this in the comments, I was like, the sounds of a coffee shop. Yeah. Oh, and I had it on my monitor and I'm sitting here working and I just had it up and you're, it's like, you know, and all the noises and I'm like, oh, you know, and I went and refilled my coffee and I'm like, oh, you know, and it just, yeah. it made me feel like I was in your coffee store, a coffee mm -hmm. shop, yeah. but it, I was missing, you know, my ability to go into a local coffee shop. And so it's like Crystal said, he, she says, I love watching John's videos and hearing the coffee shop noises. And that is was my initial like draw in, mm -hmm. but then I loved how you started sprinkling in education. You just like you said, you're like, well, I might as well tell people and explain what I'm doing here. Yeah. And I want you to talk about how that evolved because you then have taken live video. You started doing it more consistently because I believe you started to see one, you enjoyed the connection and two people like me were like, Oh, thank you for doing this. Like, this is awesome. Yeah. But you really, your, your videos kind of evolved from, you know, hey, I'm just going to keep myself entertained while I'm in here and talk to people to using the opportunity. You were talking to your audience and you were using it as you were educating, you were teaching. And I yeah. know you even brought in some interviews. So I want you to talk a little bit about the evolution of, you know, what you talked about and and what that kind of resulted in for you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's funny that everybody like I didn't even think about the fact that people would enjoy hearing the sounds and like the like background noise, but really like before I even enjoyed coffee, like I loved going to coffee shops mm -hmm. and most people I think will tell you that they enjoy going to cafes, but the environment, right. The sound, mm -hmm. the smells, the, the, the things you see, the pe the different people. And so that was really a fun thing that I didn't even think about ahead of time, but the evolution has been, um, you know, I like, I love to like, um, I'm kind of a marketing, I don't know that I would say I'm a marketing nerd too, but like, I do like to get in, I like the feedback. I like when people come in, I want to know, like, is this your first time in? Have you been in before? Hey, how did you find us? How did you end up getting, you know, making it here? Like, I'm always wanting that engagement and the back and forth. And so um, the most fun lives that I do are when people will like get chatty. So I'm always yes. trying to figure out like, how do I get people to like start talking to me so that we can go back and forth. And I've noticed that asking people's opinions about different things is great. Everybody wants to share their opinion because everybody has <laughs> one, right? And it almost doesn't matter what the topic is, but that's so fun. And so like, um, I, I really try to think of ways that I can get people to engage because it's just more fun. Mm -hmm. and I think they get more out of it. Um, the interviews part, it was just, um, I'm, I'm also like an entrepreneur more than me loving coffee. Like I just like entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So I love hearing people's ideas. I love encouraging people's ideas. So like if, if there's somebody that wants to do something, I'm just like, yeah, let's like, let's do it. Like, let's, let's brainstorm and figure out how you can actually get from wanting to do it to doing it. And so I kind of geek on that, but I also love to encourage people. It's just like a natural thing for me. I think I probably enjoy it myself. So that's what I give to everybody else. Um, and I have other small business friends that were going through this situation too, like everybody else. And so I decided I, just, I wanted to pull some of them on to the broadcast. And before I think you introduced me to StreamYard, which has been like a game changing tool. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing this tool with me. You know, Instagram has that 
that ability to like have the split screen, right? Mm -hmm. So I can be here, I can invite somebody to come on and we can talk. Mm -hmm. And so I invited a couple of people to do that because I, I just wanted to hear their story. Like I wanted to know, like, how is this pandemic affecting you? How is it impacting your business? Like, what are you going through? And it was also a way for my audience, whether it was large or small, I don't know, but to get introduced to somebody else. And so that may help that person's business and gain them some followers. Um, but it was just, it was really like a mix of, I'm interested in your story. I want to know what's going on with you and I can introduce these, you to these people. Um, and you know, we can all like gain something from it. And so that's just, that's been a really fun deal. And then I had somebody that was tuning in on one of my lives the other day. And I think she was a local real estate agent mm -hmm. and she was willing to jump on and just talk with me for a minute. Now, I mean, it's interesting trying to do those interviews while I'm also running a live business, like I'm behind the bar. So right. I tell people like, hey, we may be talking and I may walk away because a customer comes <laughs> in or calls with an order. So it could get awkward, but we'll work it out. It'll be fine. Mm -hmm. but I think that's what people really love is like, it's not scripted. Like this is just raw. Like this is real. This is happening right now. And we're not going to script it and try to make it perfect. We're just going to go with it. Yeah. And, and, and that's the it. beauty of live video is that it's yeah. not meant to be perfect. And I it's think not. that it really allows, it really allows any business owner, any entrepreneur, regardless of skill or background or ability to be on video, right? Like we're not expecting perfection. When we watch a live video, we're not expecting that. It's that simple. And that's one of the reasons I love live video. Cause I really, truly think that once people embrace it, it is. Yeah, it's got it's a little scary. And I, I think that you would probably um, agree with me. But the more you do it, it's like no big deal. You just mm -hmm. you got it. You know what I mean? And so I love what you said, though, about, you know, that you you were asking questions because you just wanted to get people to engage. One of the things I think you do a really good job of is that like you you're creating conversation. And what's really interesting and I I don't my guess is this is this wasn't intentional, but this is what's so beautiful about this is that you're creating conversation and you're engaging. I was on, I've been on many of your live videos where I'm engaging with other people too. And then you're now, and then you're doing these things where you're like talking to other business owners and you're having conversation like, Hey, how's this affecting you? That's what happens in a coffee shop, mm -hmm. right? Like people network and they meet and they have conversations and some people don't, but like yeah. you would literally created this experience and it, it's like it naturally came out and it's just again you let people in and you let people into the culture of the cafe and and whatnot and so that I, I loved that about you know how this live broadcasting was allowing us to do all of those things and connect not only connect with each other but connect with you and get to know you better which again it makes you more memorable and we people do business with people and i know that you also you know i know you you made a comment and you said this really made you kind of like you were kind of like you know you were like the the business owner that really uh wanted to build a business where it didn't rely on the business owner to be the face because you didn't you wanted to be able to still you know, kind of be able to go do other things and not feel like you had to be behind the counter all the time. And so yeah. you've empowered your staff to really be like that face of your business. Mm -hmm. This obviously pulled you out front of that, which I think you've probably learned even more about your your customers and your business because you've stepped out uh, and, and behind the counter like that. But yep. you also, what I, I, I love that you've done too, is you've brought in, like the other day, you brought on uh, one of your baristas. Uh, mm -hmm. on the video and she's talking to you and talking and talking about stuff. So again, now I think her name's Jess. Is that right? Yeah. Jess yeah. is on there. Yeah. So I, I've never been in John's coffee shop because the guys it's in Arkansas, but like now I know one of his baristas. So again, yeah. by using this video, you're, you're introducing your staff to people. Your, your business in general is becoming more memorable because I'm getting to know the people in the business. And yeah. that is one of the wonderful things that I love about it as well. And And you've done such a good job utilizing these different tools and you know, let's talk about that for a minute because with I know that um, I you know messaged you and I was like, hey, you should try Streamyard because mm -hmm. you were. I remember you're like, I, I used to be able to. I think you used to be able to bring someone on on Facebook, but I can only do it on Instagram. And I was like, dude, you got to do Streamyard, and but you like jumped in, embraced it, and you've been using Streamyard in some really innovative ways. For example, having you know you're talking to the camera, having the bar cam, you know, using your phone and having it on the actual like espresso machine. 
And you also have been live at home and you've had Jess there in the coffee shop and you're talking. And so there you are, here you are at home, but yet you're still the face of your business. So talk about what that experience has been like with not only just that, but also utilizing a software application like StreamYard. And I, and I also do want you to mention how you were able to um, use this, this application, not only on your business page, but you used it to teach a workshop. Is that right? Yeah, I did. Sorry, this is real life. Like I have my staff sending me a text message, so I'm sending. I'm sending <laughs> I love that. it. I uh, love it. Business, business. Yeah, for I mean, sure. this is real life, guys. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, I think what it was was I was, uh, yeah, I was, I was doing like the Facebook Live native app, and I was, I was streaming to my personal profile mm-hmm. because like that's where I felt like the most people would see me because we're our business is more active on Instagram honestly mm-hmm. um but honestly Instagram's live um broadcasting thing like I don't love it as much right. as Facebook's honestly there's limited. more yeah. there's more capabilities here on Facebook mm-hmm. anyway like you you tuned in and like you're my honestly you're like my you're my regular from Indiana that's how I refer right. to you all the time <laughs> like oh my regular from Indiana's here um but uh yeah, you were like, hey, there's this tool that will allow you to to broadcast from all these platforms and so and at the same time, and you can do this and this and this and this. And it was just like like <laughs> my IT, like marketing side, <laughs> entrepreneur side was just like, oh my gosh, I have all of these toys now. It's like to a play new toy, with. I know. <laughs> I have all of these possibilities now to play with, and this is gonna be so much better. Um, and so yeah, it's honestly made it made the broadcasting I think the quality better and more engaging like mm-hmm. I can, I have more flexibility to engage with people um uh and yeah I did I, I used StreamYard actually pretty soon after you introduced it to me to uh to run my first live training that I did so uh I've been in the for months I've been planning to do some live courses mm-hmm. well, not some live but but online courses mm-hmm. And then this COVID-19 deal happened and it was like the kick in the pants that was like, you got to get something out online now because like your brick and mortar business is doing this. People are online at home, like get online, mm-hmm. like do something. And so I did like I, I, um, I launched my first like co- coffee brewing at home class and I had, I think, 11 or 12 paid customers that joined that. And yeah, I like, I set up a camera, I set up one camera. I wish I could share a picture of, of the back. I took a behind the scenes picture of my setup, but it's like, I had my computer, which was like one camera angle. That was me. And then I had another camera that was just focused on my coffee brewing devices. So people could see me actually brewing coffee live. And so I would, you know, so I used StreamYard in that way to give people like a couple of different angles and to feel like they were there actually in a class. Um, but then I was also able to engage in live questions and do all of these things as if we were sitting in the same room conducting a class. Like it didn't feel like any value or anything was lost for the viewer um, because this is just such a great platform. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. that, that's the question you asked me, right? Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Right. I mean, I think that I I love that, you know, you took this this tool, StreamYard. And again, that's the tool that we're using right now. That's how I'm able to have you on the show is how I'm able to have the custom banner, the custom background. It's how I can bring on comments like Crystal. And she's like, oh, my gosh, I never thought about two camera angles. I know Crystal's brain is tweaking right now because... She teaches podcasting and maybe she's going to do behind the scenes while she's also there, you know, whatnot. A lot of fun things you can do, but this tool does increase engagement. It absolutely helps you create a show that like, it's just more engaging. It's just more professional looking. And I think I really loved that you were like, I think I can use this for my workshop too. There are so many different ways that we can use live video. It's not just about broadcasting and then promoting something. You can also use it to do all kinds of things. And so I really love how you've embraced the tool and come up with these innovative ways to use it. Um, but well, can I say one, can I interject? Yeah, absolutely. Like, the, the timing that you introduced this tool to me was perfect because I was in, I was in the like promoting and developing mm-hmm. of what the course was going to look like. And I was really struggling with, do I like pre-record and produce this class and then uh, premiere it on Facebook mm-hmm. or something? And like, 
so it's recorded um or do i do it live and i was really struck because i wanted it to be excellent like i didn't want to do something live that was just kind of like hokey and Mm -hmm. not really well done and so then you introduced Streamyard to me and i was like okay I can get creative with this. I can, you know, and the multiple camera angles idea came and I was like, I can engage. I can bring people's questions up on the screen. Like I can do all these things that if I pre-recorded this deal, like I can't do it. I can't mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was just, it was perfect. That's yeah. how I ended up on doing it that way. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you did. And I think, I, I think you got a lot of really great feedback on your, mm-hmm. on your class. Cause I, even after you did your class, you know, I remember seeing people commenting and talking about like, when are you going to do another one? You know, and I thought just such a smart thing to do a great way to just, you know, did you make a million bucks? No, but it's like you had fun. You were able to help people brew at home, which the reason, one of the reasons why this is a great benefit for you and your business is you sell coffee. I can buy your coffee right now and you can ship it to me, but if I don't brew it correctly, I'm not going to get the best experience. And so I thought, what a great, you know, thing, what a great way to help people get the best out of your products. And so again, I always say it, you're like, you're like my star example right now. You're doing all the things I'm always encouraging businesses to do, especially small businesses. And you're putting yourself out there. You're connecting with your audience. You're doing interviews. You're bringing other people in to introduce, you know, to add more value to your broadcast. You know, like when you had, uh, you know, other, you have these other people on and they're sharing not only just about their business, like, or their experience, again, you're creating that environment, like in the cafe, but they're also like sharing stuff too. Like, like that's valuable. And so, you know, that's one of the things I always say that one of the reasons why I like to use a p- application like StreamYard is you can bring on guests and you can do those things. And then of course, I love to how you were going live consistently daily to a point where literally I was like, oh, it's nine. I got to hurry up. And, you know, I tend to get up work and then I go get ready. And then I come down to my office. And a lot of times I'd be like getting ready while I was like watching it, but I really enjoyed the most like being at my desk because I can have it over here on the computer. And anyway, I got to a point where I was like new to tune in around that time. And that consistency of you going, and it was nine o'clock my time, eight o'clock your time. But mm-hmm. that consistency, you, I think probably the more you did it, you got, I noticed more and more people on those live streams, but then you were able to say, Hey, Oh, by the way, guys, I have this workshop coming up. And so you were able to also offer all this value guys when john goes live a lot of these live videos were like an hour long and people stayed on they came and they went and they some people stayed on the whole time but he could just mention this upcoming paid opportunity during these live videos because he was there front and center but you know why he was able to mention and sell something it's because he was spending all this other time just offering value and so if john were to just jump on video and only offer the workshop it wouldn't work but because he's always offering value, he's allowed. We trust him. We respect him that he can mention this workshop that he's got coming up as well. So I loved that you did that. And, and you know, you actually mentioned the workshop. And, and I, 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 my guess is it helped you sell seats to the workshop because people were made aware of it because of the videos they were watching. Yeah, I mean, I would like to think so. I don't mm-hmm. I don't I didn't actually do a poll of how people found it or mm-hmm. I don't know, but I'm sure it didn't hurt. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, yeah. it certainly didn't hurt after the fact either, because. Like I said, you were talking about the workshop you did, and then people in the were they were in your workshop were commenting, or people were like, "Oh, when's the next one?" And so, mm-hmm. again, I, I, we got to build on all the stuff that we do. So, with right. that being said, are you going to offer another workshop? I am. Yeah, I've actually. Awesome. Yeah, I've got to get going on the. Uh, <laughs> I've got to get going on on promoting it and doing all the things again. Hot seat. You know? Hot seat. When is it? Yeah. When's it going to be? Oh gosh, I don't know exactly. When. It's. I, I think I need to get it done probably within the next month to 90 days, uh, it's going to be a uh, home espresso. So I'm going to teach mm. people how to get the most out of those home espresso machines that they have sitting on their counter and uh, you know, how to make some of the, some of the lattes and cappuccinos and stuff that we make in the shop. I'm going to teach people how to do that at home. Awesome. I love yeah. it. I yeah. love it. Well, good. Well, John, where, if people want to learn about, you know, it's Zateo, right? I'm not saying that right. Okay. You good. Are saying it right. I've been saying it correctly. Good. Um, can they just find Zateo Coffee on Instagram, on Facebook? How should they, what's the best way for them to follow you? And are you going to keep up these Facebook live videos? Man, that's a great question. I was just thinking about that. I was like, I've created this beast now. And, <laughs> and the thing is, is like keeping it going. And, you know, even as I start to like back out of the shop more mm-hmm. and put staff back in place, the, the, that is the question I've kind of been kicking around in my head is like, how am I going to keep this thing going? 
um, which is why I've been doing lives with staff members mm -hmm. when I'm at home. And um, what was your other question? Uh, what's the best way for them to follow oh, you? The best way for yeah. So we are on Instagram. We're on Facebook. Um, Zateo. So we've got two stores, and we have an Instagram and Facebook for each one. I know we could talk about whether that was a good move or not, but uh, <laughs> the business, the, the models and the stores are slightly different um, in each location. And so uh, we, we went that route, but we are Zateo Coffee mm -hmm. and Zateo Coffee LR on Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. And you can just go to ZateoCoffee.com if you want to hit our website or order any beans off of our online store or mugs or whatever, and we can ship them to you. But yeah, that's where that's where you can find us online. Awesome. I love it. Well, we're going to work on that strategy next week because you're in the Facebook Live boot camp. So yeah. we're going to work on that strategy because you've yeah. got to keep this up. It's been too awesome and too great. And one, I'll miss it. I know Crystal will miss it. But also your local audience is going to miss it too. And, you know, we don't know what the next six months hold. We don't know what the next six days hold, really. But yeah if we just keep staying in action, then we're going to be able to adapt and make things work. So yep. having an audience is very valuable right now. So yeah. I'm looking forward to having you in the boot camp, and we will work on that strategy for sure. And Great. you will feel good about it for sure. Yeah, so, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, yeah, John, thanks so much for being here. I am so grateful that you shared your story with us. And I think that I hope that my audience got a lot of inspiration from what you've been doing and knowing that this is actually can be fun and it can work. And there are some really great results that you can get out of it, yeah. even if it's just more engagement and a better connection. And again, growing your audience like Crystal's in Texas. I'm in Indiana and we are part of your audience now. So we weren't before, but now we are. So obviously yeah. for sure. And uh, Doug says, yeah, man, keep going with this and never stop innovating. Love this in the small business space. So very awesome. good. Well, John, thanks again for being here. And uh, I'll be talking to you soon and I'll see you next week in the bootcamp. Thank you so much for having me. It's, you bet. it's been a, a lot of fun. Good. Thanks, John. See ya. Bye. And that was my interview with John. So first I'll say, can you tell I have so much more energy when I'm doing a video? I have way, 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 way more energy when I am doing any kind of live training on video, especially when I'm interviewing somebody. And you can catch these videos that I do. Uh, I do them on my Facebook page at Melanie Diane. Uh, and I also do them inside of my private Facebook community that is free and it's open to anyone uh, that is wanting to learn more about do-it-yourself marketing. And that is DIY Marketing with Melanie. And so um, you'll see that my video content is quite energetic. But I hope that you found John's story really inspiring. And I hope that you found it, you know, thought provoking. And if you're not already embracing live video, I hope that his him sharing what he's been able to do with it will get you thinking about it and getting you to taking the next steps with it. And if you're already doing live video, then maybe you got some new ideas with how you can up level the, those videos and get even more engagement and more connection. So I appreciate you guys being here. And again, uh, I hope that you'll be embracing live video because it is very, very powerful. And I hope that again, today's episode just further told that story that I'm always trying to tell. So you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll be talking to you soon. Oh, 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 oh,